Jay Leno, Donkey Kong, Benicio Del Toro. What do these three things have in common? They're collectors. Jay Leno has cars, Donkey Kong has golden bananas, and Benicio Del Toro has glowing rocks and a space duck. Unlike these guys, I'm not spending millions of dollars or credits or whatever currency DK uses, but I'd like to think that I've amassed enough cool stuff to be considered a collector myself. So today, we're gonna take a look at my top 10 favorite video game collector editions. Disclaimer, these are my favorite collector editions from my own personal collection. Yes, the Saints Row 4 Super Dangerous Wad Wad Edition is really cool in that it literally includes two cars and a trip to space. It costs a million dollars, and I don't own that. So that's why it's not on this list. Let's begin. Number 10. Dark Souls, the franchise that answers the question, what if Franz Kafka took a crack at a Legend of Zelda game? It's bleak, lonely, relentless, and in my opinion, one of the best game franchises in existence. The first game was so great that when the second one was announced, I knew I wanted to get my hands on a special edition. And you astute observers might even remember my Dark Souls 2 video from four years ago, where I stood in front of both a PS3 and 360 special edition. That's right, I don't deny I doubled down on Dark Souls and I'm damn glad I did. The steelbook is beautifully moody and goes the extra mile of being slightly contoured. Inside the steelbook are some nice downloads for in-game gear and there's a CD soundtrack that can make any menial task feel like an epic boss battle. You got this book of this gorgeous game art. Much of the game's beauty is obscured in dramatic shadows, so I appreciate the opportunity to see some of the detail I missed while playing spotlighted here in this beautiful art book. There's this map that's printed on cloth, which gives off a medieval fantasy vibe you couldn't get from a simple poster. Just looking at it brings me back to roughing it out in Drank Lake. That's right, you heard me, Drank Lake. You guys roasted me so hard on the Dark Souls 2 episode for mispronouncing things. I've carried that shame with me for four years now, and I'll be damned if I ever mispronounce anything from this game ever again. The Drank Jack Scholes 2 Collector's Addition also includes this sweet stoic statue of a badass warrior knight. You'll see in nearly all of these special editions that a statue or figure is the crowning glory in the box, and this 12-inch dude sets the bar for quality. He brandishes two swords in order to show off the dual wield mechanic that separated this game from the first. And there's just something so cold, brutal, and lonely about him that encapsulates the tone of despair that is Dark Souls. All right, ladies and gentlemen, in 2014, the Dark Souls 2 Collector Edition was valued at $120. In 2020, the average going price is $90. Hopefully things turn around before this bonfire is reduced to embers. Number nine. With great power comes great responsibility and the ability to feel like Spider-Man. And a great Spider-Man game deserves a great collector's edition. Lo and behold, it got one. When the 2018 game Marvel Spider-Man was announced, the hype was almost tangible. I knew I had to get my hands on a collector's edition, despite having made a regrettable Marvel-related purchase the year prior. But I want it. I don't think they come out of there, bud. But I want it! They don't come out, Gerard. I want the power of Thanos, Frazier. Okay, but just hear me out. They, they don't they don't come out. They're permanent. I want the infinity eggs, Frazier. I think those are supposed to be infinity stones, actually. You don't understand. I want the infinity eggs to make the infinity omelet! I followed my spidey senses, forced my reservations aside, and was rewarded with a collector edition that did everything right. The steel book is simple, but that pop of red is sure to make it stand out on any gamer's shelf. And with a game that's got top-notch visuals, yeah, you better give me some book of sweet game art. You wanna toss me a sticker of the Spider-Man emblem? I'll throw that bad boy on my third period chemistry binder, no problem. And I will gladly take the City That Never Sleeps DLC because I will never be tired of being Spider-Man. Once again, it's the statue that gives me the most IRL satisfaction. Not only does this thing look cool resting atop the office shelf, but if you look closely, you'll see a story that you might otherwise miss. Everything in this rubble represents an enemy Spider-Man vanquishes in the game, and whoever designed it took great care in interweaving the various components. Having completed the game, I can look over the statue and go, yeah, I did beat those guys pretty good, didn't I? 
In 2018, Marvel's Spider-Man Collector's Edition was purchased at $150. In 2020, the average going price is... $200. You heard it here, folks. This item has crawled up the water spout and hopefully never washes out. Number eight. Unlike Marvel Spider-Man, where I was just a dude chasing hype, there wasn't much of a gamble when I decided to get my Batman Arkham Knight Limited Edition. The Arkham series has proven to me time and time again that they can provide the quintessential Batman experience, and it was time to pay my respects. First off, I appreciate how removing the sleeve around the box reveals a sort of epitaph for the Gotham Knight. While many would see this main box as an opportunity to showcase some flashy art, the plain, monolithic look of the box starts your journey off on the right mood as if to hint, it's gonna get dark in here. If you're lying, I'll break the other one. The other one? Right away, you're greeted by the Dark Knight himself on a steel book, another fantastic addition to the Steelbook Library. You get an exclusive skin pack and your typical book of game art, which similar to Dark Souls, I thoroughly enjoyed since so much of this game's details get lost to shadow and mood lighting. And since we're dealing with a DC superhero here, the creators of this limited edition were sure to throw in this comic book, Arkham Knight number zero. This comic book gives a brief recap of the events of the game, is masterfully drawn, well written, and aside from being a promotional giveaway at select events, is exclusive to the Arkham Knight Limited Edition. All right, you ate your green beans, now it's time for the big boy statue. However, it's worth noting that before this game debuted, a Batmobile Collector's Edition, not Limited Edition, was available for pre-sale in order to highlight the introduction of the Batmobile into the gameplay. The scale Batmobile model was actually pulled due to unforeseen quality issues, which pissed off a lot of people eagerly awaiting for their new toy. So I unfortunately was unable to get my hands on it, but let's see what this limited edition gave us instead. As cool as it would be to have a Batmobile, I love this statue. Some may mock its simplicity, but I say this is the statue the city deserves. You see, I enjoy a scale replica of a character as much as anybody else, but it's when a figure captures the tone of a game that I say it's going on the shelf. Again, it has that in memoriam feel to it that was hinted at on the box. You can imagine a blown up version of this standing tall in a Gotham City Park or Town Square. This thing is an effigy symbolizing how the myth has far exceeded the man. In 2015, the Batman Arkham Knight Limited Edition was purchased for $100. And in 2020, the average going price is $130. Sounds like great news to me. It's moment like these that explain why I'm so serious about special editions. Number seven. Steelbooks, 12 inch statues. It's hard to go wrong when you include these in your collector's edition. It's kind of what we've grown accustomed to at this point and you'd be a damn fool to try and reinvent the wheel. That is unless you're Catherine. If you told me back in the early 2000s that I would fall in love with a game where you play as a guy who's torn between two beautiful women named Catherine, one with a C and one with a K, and he runs around in his underwear and has sheep horns in his dreams and begins to question not only his morals, but reality itself. Meanwhile, men are dying in their sleep, and oh yeah, it's a puzzle game? I'd say, shut up, bro. I'm playing Tony Hawk. Go eat some go -Gurt. But man, this game won me over hard by being so well-constructed and just so different. So it was only fitting that the Catherine Love is Over Deluxe Edition was just as different. The Xbox 360 version features Catherine with the K on the cover, and the PS3 version features Catherine with the C. And yes, I have both. Why? Because I want it. I want them. Gerard, stop. I want them, Fraser. They glow because of double A batteries! You remove the sleeve and discover that your treasures are within a stray sheep pizza box. Already, it's like they're throwing me into the game. Lift the lid and you get a lot of white cloth. You guys, I have never been so excited to get cloth. This first piece of cloth is the Empty Hearts t-shirt that Catherine with a C snags from you and seductively rocks in the game. The second is a pillowcase. A pillowcase of the same Catherine looking her best in case my life gets really, really lonely. I doubt you'll ever find this on my bed as I would surely creep out any guest, but there's a comfort in knowing that I have one. No, wait a minute, I have two. The last piece of cloth definitely gave me a laugh the first time I laid eyes on it. I am proud to say that I am an owner of Vincent's polka dot boxer shorts, not steel book, 
not statue. I have boxer shorts and I am 100% cool with it. I said it before and it bears repeating, I love it when a special edition provides me with merch that matches the tone of the game. This not only fulfills that criteria, but puts me in the game. And yes, they throw in some traditional stuff like a soundtrack CD and a book of game art where you can ogle over Catherine eating pizza. But this edition proves that creative can triumph over expensive. In 2011, the Catherine Love is Over Deluxe Edition was purchased at $80. And in 2020, the average going price is $120. And with that profit, I can afford to take my girlfriend to get pizza and buy a pillowcase for my bed. Number six. The Assassin's Creed franchise managed to teach lessons in history while retconning the hell out of it at the same time. I can honestly say that I know more about the Medici and Machiavelli because of these games than I ever learned in class. So when word got out that the hooded acrobats were coming to the colonies, I fired two pistols in the air and said, yeah, America. And what better way to show my patriotism than by getting the Assassin's Creed 3 limited edition. While you do get the traditional game art, it's presented in the non-traditional manner that is George Washington's notebook. This thing looks aged, has plenty of notes on the elements of the game, and gives that nice immersion that wouldn't be found in a traditional art book. Inside the game case is a download code for four bonus missions, and here's something you don't see often, a hefty little Assassin's Creed belt buckle. And of course, you can bet your Yankee Doodle last that I'm gonna save that statue for last. But I have to say, few special editions have a second item that gets me nearly as excited as the statue. Check out what this limited edition did to Old Glory. This is a colonial flag made with actual cloth and has the Assassin's Creed logo embroidered into it. I have never had the chance to simultaneously exude the aura of a video game nerd and American Patriot until now. These colors don't run and I will gladly say the Pledge of Allegiance every morning to this flag. All right, statue time. Here we have Connor perched atop a crag, brandishing his tomahawk and hidden blade while sporting one, two, three, four, five, six other weapons on his person. This is one of, if not the most detailed statues in my collection, from the ruffles in his pants to his arsenal of weapons to the colonial flag waving gallantly behind him. The Connor statue fills me with a weird amount of pride. And in 2012, the Assassin's Creed 3 Limited Edition was purchased at $120. And in 2020, the average going price is $70. You know, I have a feeling it's that low because everyone did not like Assassin's Creed 3, and I totally get it. But hey, this freaking statue and everything else included is actually pretty tight. Number five. God of War, God of War, God of War. If Assassin's Creed gets to retcon history, God of War gets to retcon mythology. The series takes the revered beings of Greek myth and legend and asks, what if they all ended up just being assholes? The response, a bigger asshole in the form of a ashed, tattooed Spartan that would need to rise up and get rid of them. While Santa Monica Studios could have easily gotten away with more button mashing good times, they totally reinvented themselves to make an incredibly grounded father-son odyssey. And the God of War Stonemason's Edition hardcore matches that. Out the gate, the cold Nordic runes on the steel book show a stark contrast to the fiery gold of previous games. Inside, you get some downloads for in-game armor and shields, as well as digital codes for comic book and game art. And while I prefer to have physical copies of those last two things to put on display, I'm down with Kratos getting more environmentally friendly in his old age. Good for you, man. You get a cloth map of Midgard, always a nice touch and bringing me to a fantasy world of old a keychain of the sever head of Mimir that talks when you push the button on the back, and this is rad, carved figurines of a horse, a troll, and the dwarven Haldra brothers. Add to that a ring that is far too big for any of my fingers, and you have all the makings for a god-killing Greek transplanted in Norway to feel at home. All right, everyone, prepare to meet what has to be the most dynamic statue in my collection. Allow me to introduce to you Kratos and Atreus going buck wild in a pair of droggers. As much as I want to shrink wrap these guys and protect them forever, there's no way I can't put them up on display. Look at all the detail. Look at all the fury. Look at this dude's icy blue blood flying at the back of his neck. Just looking at it fills my blood with Spartan rage to the max that I can go eight on some deities. Let's go God of War. 
To top it all off, one of the coolest things about this is a letter from Corey Balrog, the director. I love these kinds of additions because it makes everything feel a little bit more personal. And I've been following Corey a long time in his journey, and knowing that this is a personal thing for him makes it personal for me as well. In 2018, the God of War Stonemasons Edition was purchased for $150. And in 2020, the average going price is... 175. Look, I get that I'm not getting a lot of value for all these, but that's because most of these just came out. You never know. Number four. From childhood until now, I can't think of a time when I couldn't reach out to Link and Zelda to go on an unforgettable quest against Ganon and the various forces of evil. Showing my appreciation for the franchise went from a desire to a necessity. So when Nintendo revealed the Nintendo Switch and The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild was going to be its flagship title, I said yes to all of it. All of it, yes. And the moment Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Master Edition became available, I once again said yes. I don't even know if I could have said no. How do I explain? Me owning this collector's edition, it was, it was inevitable. I No, drop it, drop it, drop it, drop it! The first thing I pulled out of the box was the Switch Sheikah Slate cover, allowing my Switch to resemble the Sheikah Slate in the game. Art imitating life, if you will, as the Sheikah Slate definitely looks like a Switch. So now I have a thing made to resemble a thing that was made to resemble the first thing. So it's like life imitating art imitating life, but the life part could also be box art, kind of, whatever. It's immersive as balls. You get this awesome CD soundtrack that's great for when you're resting on top of a grassy hill and decide to throw a bunch of random stuff in a pot for dinner. A collector's coin, which I'll admit doesn't do a whole lot for me, but it's shiny and maybe I'll use it to make tough decisions one day. It's also kind of weird because these are the same coins that were given out at E3, which I have a whole bunch of because I was at E3, so more of the things I own, I guess. This parchment with the Calamity Ganon image on one side and a map of Hyrule on the other side is pretty dope. But the big takeaway here is the Master Sword statue. A Zelda game isn't a Zelda game unless it has a Master Sword, but we've never seen one so worn, chipped, and rusted like this before. Seeing it in disarray ties into a major motif of the game where we see nature growing over the remains of a forgotten history. And despite being the toughest and most durable weapon in the series, seeing the Master Sword in this state reminds us that time and nature are forces that everything must succumb to eventually. Yeah, man, I got all of that from a little resin statue. Now, in 2017, The Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild Master Edition was purchased for $150. In 2020, the average going price is $530. Just goes to show folks that, wait, holy shit, did I just read $530? Yeah, my dudes, that's huge plays right there. Number three. Bioshock is the franchise that I wish I somehow came up with. Its themes are forever relevant, its design is nothing short of a masterpiece, and its story will someday be adapted to a big screen even if I have to produce the goddamn thing myself. The first time I buried my pipe wrench into a splicer skull while Bobby Darian's Beyond the Sea played in the distance, I was in heaven. The second game did a decent job of carrying the Rapture storyline a bit further. And then Bioshock Infinite took me to places high and low, beautiful and terrifying, and gave me an ending that I never saw coming. Now in 2017, Bioshock released its 10th anniversary collector's edition for the Xbox One and PS4, and it included remastered versions of all three Bioshock games, all loaded with their respective DLCs. Except for the Bioshock 2 multiplayer, which I probably wouldn't be playing anyways, let's be real, I'm not a fan of it. But that alone enough was for me to be on board but not enough to be considered a collector's edition. So, they included a statue. That's it. No bulk of game art, no soundtrack, no pair of boxer shorts. But that one statue was enough. This creepy little sister and her behemoth guardian monstrosity takes me right back to Rapture. The Art Deco window and the checkered floor are straight out of the era. The Big Daddy is taking a dynamic stance, and this pool of water he's stepping in is a nice touch and even drips off to the side. It's a reminder that that once glorious city of Rapture is springing leaks and slowly falling apart. 
But the best part about the statue is when you have it loaded with four AAA batteries and push the button on the back. The little sister's eyes glow, the big daddy's eyes glow, and his drill spins, making him prime to impale the next person to come near the little sister. Add in some of the girl's disturbing lines and the monster's painful moans, and you've got a lovely conversation piece for your next cocktail party. Another reason why I value this edition so much is that it comes with a certificate of authenticity, which shows that only 5,200 of these were made. In 2017, the Bioshock 10th Anniversary Collector Edition was purchased at $200. In 2020, the average going price is... Four hundred dollars. Just find the right collector edition and wipe away the debt. Number two. Some of you may remember that three years ago, I got an exclusive peek at Resident Evil 7 and I freaking lost my mind. It was revolutionary. You've heard the old adages like no one needs to reinvent the wheel and if it ain't broke, don't fix it. But as we learned with 2018's God of War, Choosing to evolve instead of resting on your laurels can have some groundbreaking outcomes. Resident Evil has done this twice. Once by ditching the fixed camera and going for a more action-oriented game in RE4, and once again by swerving into first-person survival horror with Resident Evil 7. It's only fitting that the reinvention of a franchise gets a reinvention of a collector's edition as well. I own a few other Resident Evil collector's editions, and they've all hit their mark just fine. Yet the Resident Evil 7 Collector's Edition did something a little different, and you're about to see what I mean. Just like my favorite other editions, this one puts you in the driver's seat as the main character. You get a VHS tape, well, it looks like a VHS tape, only you pop open the top to reveal some other goodies housed inside. The first trinket inside the VHS is a doll finger. It resembles an item that was originally found in the game's demo, and it's a USB drive, which should make for some interesting conversations with folks in your office. Shoving fingers in ports again, Bill? <laughs> oh, Mondays. Also straight out of the game is this note that reads, I shall dash you against the stones. No thanks, I'm fine. But once again, I like how this edition is giving me things found in the game to really up that immersion factor. I wouldn't expect a white steel book of a Resident Evil game, but with this contoured art on the front of it, it totally works. And before we get to the main attraction, we can't overlook the charming lithograph of cannibalistic Baker family. They're scary as hell, and I have no idea where to put this, but damn, it looks pretty cool. All right, so we've seen some cool stuff so far but nothing that completely turns a collector's edition on its head. Well, check this bad boy out. Yes, a figure of Jack Baker would have been gnarly, but a model replica of the Baker house is where it's at. It's so detailed in its dilapidation that I feel like I'm gonna get tetanus or something just by touching the wrong part. And while being a cool model would be enough, this piece is so much more. First off, it's super freaking heavy and if I remove the chimney and turn this crank, we see that this house is a freaking light up music box. In 2017, the GameStop exclusive Resident Evil 7 Biohazard Collector's Edition was priced and purchased at $180. In 2020, the average going price is $400. When it comes to smart investments, no one's robbing this zombie. Number one. This list of special collector editions has taken me back to great times with even greater trinkets, big and small, to really flaunt the grandeur of each franchise. But if you haven't noticed, each edition so far has been for a single player game. Well, maybe I should reconsider Marvel vs. Capcom Infinite. Cook eggs in microwave. Inevitable breakfast. Never mind, I'm good. But this final entry has given me countless hours of multiplayer bliss and it also happens to have my absolute favorite special edition in my collection. Everyone, I'd like to introduce you to Borderlands The Handsome Collection Gentleman Claptrap in a Box Edition. Bonkers item, however, that gets me all twisted up giddy. 
it comes in its own separate container that's made to look like a Hyperion box. So it already feels like I'm getting my hands on some sweet loot. So here for you folks right here, right now, a remote controlled gentleman claptrap. This thing beats any statue or model in my collection. It's badass, hilarious, and gives me a piece of the game that I can annoy my friends with. Why does a robot need a top hat, mustache, and a monocle? I don't know, but I love that it has a mustache, hat, and a monocle. You can easily control it with an app you download on your smartphone. You can make it say one of numerous pre-recorded phrases from the game. You can speak through it like a megaphone. And it has a built-in camera that connects to your phone, which means I can crash into my friend's legs from a completely different room. I never knew this was the collector's item I always wanted until I had it, and I'm never letting it go. That is unless I lose everything in a fire and it's worth a lot of money. So let's look into that. In 2015, Borderlands, the handsome collection, gentlemen claptrap in a box edition, was purchased at $400. In 2020, the average going price is 320 bucks. Oh, perhaps this edition will sell for higher beyond the Thunderdome. But I do want to add that I actually fibbed a little bit and I didn't buy it for 400 bucks. I bought it for 60 because GameStop was having a clearance sale, baby, and I found it in the back like a treasure waiting to be discovered in a in a in an abandoned cave. Hell yeah. I truly cannot believe that Claptrap would be robbed like that. But there you have it. Those are my top 10 collector's editions from my own personal collection. Feel free to comment down below with any cool editions that you own, or if there's any you think that make a must-have collection and should be added to my collection, let me know too. Until then, Gentleman Claptrap and I are going to figure out how to get those infinity eggs out of their little storage container. See you all next time. No. Why do you veer that direction? I didn't... Okay. <laughs> Come on. Thing off the table. Oh, boy. No! Nope.